Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, April 8th. We are in Unit 2. This is our second lesson from Unit 2 for the spring quarter. And the unit is entitled, All Glory and Honor. And of course, that is all glory and honor to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, from the Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is Taking Directions. Taking Directions. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalms 19, verses 7 to 10, and Psalms 119, verses 105 to 112. Our background scripture is John chapter 21, verses 1 to 14, which also is our printed or lesson passage. Uh, the aims of the lesson today from the Adult Quarterly are, number one, to summarize the account of the risen Christ's appearance to seven disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Number two, affirm the symbolic and real presence of Christ in our communal meals. And then number three, practice the presence of Christ by eating together often. Uh, we're going to spend a little time talking about that as we discuss the lesson about those aims. Uh, the adult quarterly lesson has three major divisions. The first division is looking, of course, the introduction, and then looking back, which is covered between uh, John 21, verses 1 and 3. The second is obedience rewarded. That's covered between verses 4 and 9. And then finally, compassion demonstrated. And that's covered between verses 10 and 14. Uh, and as many of you know, I uh, also um, use the standard commentary in my lesson preparation and the title from the standard commentary is the risen lord appears the risen lord appears and the additional aims of the standard or recount number one recount the story of jesus's appearance at the sea of galilee following his resurrection that's the same as the adult quarterly number two identify elements of the story that revealed Jesus' constant provision for his followers. We're going to see how God, how the Lord Jesus Christ provided for his followers. And what uh, we're going to uh, discuss the reason for this appearance to these disciples on the Sea of Galilee or Tiberias, as it's called in our lesson text. Then, number three, write a prayer of commitment to trust in Jesus' provisions under all circumstances. Now, this lesson also has three major divisions. The first is unhappy result. That's covered between verses 1 and 4. The second is unforeseen provision. That's covered between verses 5 and 8. And the last is unexpected meal. And that's covered between verses 9 and 14. Uh, and before we read our lesson text and get into um, our lesson, actually a, a little introduction of, uh, a little background I should say, um, let's just have a word, a, a quick word of prayer. Father, we do thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to study your precious word. We pray that you give us a clear understanding of your word, Lord. And as our understand, as you give us understanding, increase our faith. And as our faith is increased, Lord, increase our obedience. We pray this in the precious and most holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Um, the uh, let's read the lesson text, and then we'll have uh, on, on, a, on the second thought. Let's let's have a little bit of introduction. Our lesson today follows uh, John's accounts of Jesus' appearance, of two of his appearances to the disciples in chapter 20. 
uh, he appears to all the disciples the evening of the day that he was resurrected. On the Sunday he was resurrected, he appeared behind locked doors. Uh, and you can read about that uh, in John chapter 20 between verses 19 and 23. All of his disciples, however, except Thomas. Thomas was not there, and when Thomas finally showed up and was told that Jesus had appeared, he didn't believe it. And he said, unless I see the print of the nails in his hand and the, 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 the wound in his side, I will not believe. And, of course, uh, a week later, Jesus appears to Thomas, to the other uh, disciples as well as Thomas. That's covered between verses 20, chapter 20, verses 24 and 29. Uh, and then <clears throat> uh, in, in verses 30 and 31 of chapter 20, uh, John gives uh, what is believed to, to be kind of a summation of his gospel. And in fact, some believe that uh, chapter 21 uh, may have been written at a later time. Some even speculate by someone else, but <clears throat> I, I don't personally believe that. But verse 30 and 31 of chapter 20 re read, and many other signs, and actually let's back up to 29, Jesus uh, tells uh, in 28, 27 rather, no, let's, uh, 29 rather, Jesus tells Thomas, Thomas, uh, believe, uh, uh, see, Jesus said unto Thomas, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And that's us. That's where we are. We have not seen the resurrected Christ. But because of the, the, the biblical accounts, the gospel a record, uh, we can believe that he did rise, in fact, from the, from the dead. And, and the eyewitnesses, there's more, uh, uh, that there's more to substantiate the bodily resurrection of Christ uh, in the historical record than there is for the existence of Julius Caesar. Uh, I'll say <laughs> it's, I could say more about that. Uh, so... Chapter uh, 20, verse 30 and 31 are kind of the summation uh, verses. And, and John says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life, that's eternal life, through his name. Uh, that's the purpose. That was the purpose for the gospel and the purpose for, of course, recording the, the various miracles that Jesus performed. So our lesson begins uh, in the next chapter, 21, first verse. And it reads, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was come, when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat onto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they 
were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty-three, and for all there were no, there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Verse 12, Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine, and none of the, the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Amen. Amen. And our, our key verse is verse 12 again, which, which reads, Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? None of them dared to ask, knowing that it was the Lord. We'll talk about that when we get to that verse. Amen, amen. So, let's get into our, our lesson. Uh, we've got a, a great lesson following Resurrection Sunday uh, in uh and it really documents one of the uh, appearances of Jesus. Uh, we know that Jesus appeared to his disciples and to individuals for some uh, 40 days following his resurrection. Now, we know that 50 days following his resurrection was Pentecost. And at Pentecost, as Jesus had promised, his disciples were endued with power of the Holy Spirit. Um, so let's just jump right in here. Verse 1 reads, After these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. Now I may go back and forth between the King James and the NIV uh, so that we get a little uh, more clarity in uh, in some of the verses. But... Um, Jesus, after these things, the things that I just uh, mentioned uh, in the introduction uh, recorded in chapter 20, his appearing to the disciples the day of the resurrection, uh, his uh, reappearing uh, for the benefit of Thomas, uh, and of course he had appeared to others, individuals, uh, he appeared to Peter individually, Mary Magdalene, and we'll talk a little bit more about those other appearances. But And we don't know how long after these things this is, but uh, John is just summing up after those other uh, recordings of his appearances, Jesus showed himself again to his disciples. And that's a summary statement John is making. He appeared, but then he backs into detail. And that, that was a, a common way of writing, uh, of, uh, of ancient Hebrew writing. They would give a summary statement. And then they would provide the details. Like uh, even in Genesis, we know that uh, 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 Moses recorded that God uh, created uh, uh, Adam and Eve, male and female, uh, created he them. And then he backed into the details as to how God had taken uh, dirt uh, from the ground and how he had taken fashioned uh, Eve out of a rib from Adam and so forth. So the details are provided afterwards. And he said, so he showed himself to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and as I mentioned uh, earlier, the Sea of Tiberias is also called the Sea of Galilee, and actually it was a large lake, about 64 square miles, and we know that Jesus uh, grew up around this, this lake, it was a freshwater lake, and he performed many miracles on and around this lake, he calmed the, this, uh, this lake in a, in a storm. It's recorded in Matthew 8, 23 to 27, and elsewhere in Mark and Luke as well. Uh, he also um, uh, called his, his first disciples from the sea. Uh, we know uh, uh, Simon or Peter and uh, Andrew and James and John, they were all fishermen before, and they all uh, were um, fishermen uh, that used this, this freshwater lake. Uh, now, 
the um, uh, so let's go on verse two. There were together Simon. Oh, let me just back up. Uh, Jesus had had instructed uh, the women that met him, uh, uh, Mary Magdalene, and the uh, the women. I'm uh, 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 sorry. Let's just say Mary Magdalene uh, to tell. Peter, no, I'm sorry, let me back up, let me get my text right. From our last lesson, the angels actually instructed the women uh, that came to the tomb uh, looking to uh, finish the preparation of Jesus' body to tell his disciples to go to Galilee and meet him there where he said he would. So the Passover is over, and um, uh, they have returned to Galilee. They've gone to the Galilee area, uh, which is where, of course, the Sea of Galilee is. And it's about 70 miles from, uh, uh, from Jerusalem, walking. Verse 2, there were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus, which means twin in the Greek. Thomas does as well. And Nathaniel of Cana, that's the Cana where Jesus uh, turned the water into wine, in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and, the, and two other of his disciples. The sons of Zebedee are, of course, James and John, Bonerges, the sons of thunder, as they're called in the go- other Gospels. John, does not men- John is the writer of this Gospel and does not mention his name or his brother's name, uh, and that may be uh, uh, just be his humility. Uh, but we know that he does not. He meant to refer to himself as a disciple that Jesus loves, and this is the only place where he and his brother are referred to by inference, being the son of Zebedee. Uh, so there are uh, Peter and these other five or six, rather. Disciples, uh, we know uh, some of them are apostles, the others were uh, probably just followers of Jesus. And uh, Nathaniel may uh, be Bartholomew. Uh, it's, it's believed that uh, he might have been a disciple as well, but uh, 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 they, they, I'm sorry, an, an apostle as well. But there's, uh, there's some disagreement on that. So, but we know that they're all followers of Jesus, and they uh, find themselves perhaps wondering what the next step uh, should be. Uh, Jesus has appeared to them. Uh, Jesus told them uh, in the room when he appeared to them, uh, if we back up to chapter 20, that uh, he uh, uh, had... Uh, uh, Come, or he was. He said. He said, "Peace." Um, verse twenty-one says. Then Jesus said to them again, "Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you." And we skip down to verse it, it, twenty-one, twenty-two, and he says, "Receive ye the Holy Ghost." Uh, and he breathed on them. We know he breathed on them and said, "Receive the Holy Ghost." And he says in twenty-three, "Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted, and unto them." Uh, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So the Lord had given them uh, some apostolic authority and sent them out, uh, intended rather to send them out to spread the gospel. Uh, They apparently were not clear on the mission. And so they're sitting around, uh, I guess not knowing what to do, but Jesus had also told them to tarry until they were imbued uh, with power or uh, given power to accomplish the mission that God, uh, that the Lord Jesus had left for them. Uh, now, so we'll see what happened next. So that we don't know what they're doing. Uh, we assume that they're uh, figuring out uh, how they're going to uh, feed themselves, how they're going to survive. And so uh, it may be the next step might be natural. And that is, hey, let's do what we know how to do. So verse 3 says, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, 
and that night they caught nothing. So Simon, uh, being the natural leader that he is, decides, hey, I'm going to do something. Uh, we need to feed ourselves. I need to feed myself. So I'm going to go fishing, do what I know how to do. And so they go, and I don't know, they may charter uh, a boat. It's referred to as ships here, but these are actually small boats, fishing boats. And, uh, and they go out at night, which was the best time for fishing, uh, because the fish were closer to the surface. And, of course, uh, they could sell the fish. If they caught them overnight, uh, they would be more fresh in the morning when they took them to market to sell. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they caught nothing. And I mean, they probably toiled with, with, with dragging the nets uh, uh, here and there, and, and, uh, and they caught nothing all night. So by morning, I would imagine they're fairly spent, sore muscles and, and what have you, backs and what have you. Verse 4, But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. So Jesus appears uh, miraculously, we, I'm sure, on the shore, and his disciples uh, didn't recognize him. Now they were, as we'll, we'll see in a, a verse or two, uh, they were about a hundred yards from shore, and so it might have been difficult to recognize him because of the distance. But uh, when they get closer to him, we're going to see that, you know, they may still have a problem recognizing him as the Jesus that they knew uh, uh, before his crucifixion. And that may be because uh, Jesus has made himself look different, obscured himself. Uh, we know last week when uh, Jesus appeared to the two disciples that were on the road to Emmaus, uh, we read that their eyes were holden, and that meant restrained. They were actually held back from recognizing him. And we may, uh, this may be another occasion where Jesus is doing that. For whatever reason, we, we don't really know. I don't really know. Um, so uh, they, they don't recognize him, and uh, uh, he's going to, in verse 5 here, Jesus uh, says, then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat, or food, or fish? They answered him, No. Now, uh, Jesus speaks to them uh, as, uh, as, as his, his children, and, a, and, a, and, and he, 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 the question, the phrase really, have ye any meat, or the question, if you will, uh, when you translate it more accurately from the Greek, really is uh, uh, it anticipates the answer to the question. It, 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 it could have been phrased, you don't have any fish, do you? Or you do not have any uh, fish, you haven't caught any fish, have you? And uh, that's, that's the way, that's a better phrasing of it. So Jesus anticipates the answer, and of course they say no. Um, verse 6a, And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. So they, while they might have thought Jesus was a, a sympathetic passerby that just inquired as to uh, whether they had caught fish or not, or maybe they might have thought he might have been a potential customer to buy some fish. Uh, now <clears throat> he gives them a specific instruction to cast their net on the right side. Uh, and we know this, uh, <clears throat> this reminds us of uh, Luke doing the same, uh, giving us, I'm sorry, Jesus giving similar instruction in Luke. Chapter 5, beginning at verse 4, at verse 4, uh, when he tells um, the disciples to launch out into the deep and to cast the net on the right side for uh, a draw for a large number of fish. And we know that they, they did catch a large number of fish. So, so we see in, in, in part B of uh, verse 6 that they, they follow the instructions without any question, perhaps remembering uh, that miracle that Jesus uh, 
performed uh, back in uh, Luke chapter 5 or the instructions that he gave him that led to this abundant uh, catch of fish then. And, and of course, all the other miracles that they had witnessed uh, uh, performed by Jesus, I'm sure, uh, made them uh, more open to the possibility that uh, what this man that they don't recognize is telling them to do might be beneficial. So despite the fact that they've got sore muscles, probably sore backs and all that, uh, they do what he says without question. Verse 6b says, they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fish. Now, when it says they weren't able to draw it, it means they were not able to get the fish full, the net full of fish into the boat. The boat was too small. They couldn't get all the fish in the hull of the boat. The boat might have sank if they did. So uh, that's what that means. And, 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 and we know later uh, we give, we're given a specific number of fish uh, uh, that they actually caught uh, a little later here. Now, uh, verse 7 reads, Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, <clears throat> It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fish's coat onto him, for he was naked, and cast himself into the sea. Now, of course, the disciple whom Jesus loved was none other than John, who was the author of the gospel, <clears throat> never referred to himself by name in the gospel. And he seems to have... Uh, a little more spiritual insight than uh, than Peter and perhaps the other disciples do, uh, and uh, Peter, of course, has a, a greater propensity for action. But uh, John, remember when they both ran to the tomb, and Peter, uh, John beat Peter there, and John just stooped down and looked in. Peter just boldly went into the tomb, and then later John went in, but. Uh, John has, to, but John came away believing after he saw the empty tomb and the clothes. But, but Peter was a bit baffled at that time. Uh, he was he was still wondering what what might have happened. But John believed that he had he had rose. So, so Peter uh, uh, girds on his he girds on his fisher's coat uh, because he was naked. Well, he wasn't actually literally naked. He had on a um, uh, what was called a, a smock, a fisher smock, which is a very thin uh, uh, garment, loose garment that fishers use. Uh, but of course, he couldn't swim in that too easily because it would have uh, uh, would have prevented him from moving, from swimming, and from tr and from treading water, from the wading rather. So he had to gird that up, and he put a fisher's coat on to kind of tighten up the loose garment. But the 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 uh, the idea is that, that P Peter was so excited uh, that it was Jesus and so anxious to see him, he couldn't wait till the boat got there. Uh, they were like 100, and I would say maybe to 120 yards uh, away from shore, which was not a difficult swim, but he jumped in um, and, 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 and started swimming to shore. Uh, probably got there about the time the boat did, but um, or maybe a, a couple minutes before, but uh, not uh, uh, not early enough to really engage Jesus, and if he did, we don't know. Uh, we don't know what was said. Uh, so, uh, verse. Let's see here. Verse eight. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land. But as it were, 200 cubits dragging the net with fishes. And I would put 200 cubits at really more like 120 yards. You're saying it's about 100 yards. But that's, uh, that's not far. Uh, but they, and, and it's a good thing it wasn't far because, again, they weren't able to, uh, to put the fish in the, now, they weren't able to put the fish in the hull of the boat, so they were dragging the net along the boat. They were towing it, in other words, and I guess they were rowing uh, to shore. 
uh, and uh, and they get there again, maybe about the same time or a minute or two after Peter gets there. And now we, uh, you know, before we before we go further uh, into Division Three here, which in the standard is unexpected meal, and actually in the uh, adult quarterly compassion demonstrated beginning at verse 10 in the adult quarterly um let's let's just talk about what what this lesson i mean what the 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 narrative here we're looking at basically a narrative of of uh, an account of jesus's appearance but what does it mean i mean this is really um uh intended uh i think on the part of jesus to uh, to refocus to focus the disciples on the mission, you know. Uh, some speculate that hey, you know, they they didn't know what to do, and so they were going back to their old um, uh, lifestyle, what they knew. And and I I kind of lean toward that that understanding myself. And Jesus wanted to focus them, and particularly Peter, because Peter was a leader. We're gonna go if we have time here. Uh, to verse 15 we're going to read through verse 15 and and see if we can get a better understanding of the the purpose for this appearance uh, to the disciples uh, so verse 9 reads as soon as as soon then as they were come to land they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon now I believe that Jesus miraculously produced the fire and the fish. You know, it takes coals a little time to to heat up, certainly hot enough to cook on, uh, and we, we're not we're not given any uh, uh, any understanding that he was cooking these fish when he called out to them. It only took them a very few minutes to get to shore. So I I believe that Jesus miraculously uh, produce the coals and the fish on the coals. Uh, and uh, that's what we read in verse 9, uh, that he they, they actually see the coals and the fish. Verse 10, Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have, have uh, now caught. So Jesus had some fish there. They had a multitude. Bring some of your fish. There's seven of them, eight with Jesus. So got a nice breakfast party there so bring some of your fish as well we'll put them on the coals and cook them also verse 11 Simon Peter went up uh, and drew the net to land full of great fishes or large fishes a hundred and fifty and three and for all there were so many yet was not the net broken now the uh, these were experienced fishermen, and these fishermen knew about how much uh, weight uh, uh, the these nets could carry without breaking, and so they were amazed by the number of fish that they were able to get in this net, and it didn't break. And of course, not only was the catching of the fish a miracle performed by Jesus, or Jesus. Uh, enable them to catch this multitude of fish, but certainly Jesus enabled the net, the net to 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 not break uh, or cause the net to not break. And, and now, now Simon, uh, this is the way I think this this happened here. Simon was approaching, he'd reached the shore. He's soaking wet. He's approaching Jesus, and then he sees. He looks back, and he sees the other disciples toiling with the with the net, trying to drag it ashore. And he goes back to help them. He may not have engaged Jesus at that point, but he he doesn't want to be <clears throat> thought to not be carrying his share of the load. So he goes back to help them drag the this multitude of fish to shore. And I imagine it took all seven of them to do this. Uh, so uh, now we, uh, I said a minute ago that, uh, We remember from Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19 when the Lord called Simon, also called Peter and Andrew his brother, 
He said that he was calling them to become fishers of men, fishers of men. He was calling them away from uh, their vocation or their occupation of fishing for fish uh, and intending them to fish for men. And they have, uh, again, uh, resorted back to where he uh, called them from. And again, I believe Jesus is uh, refocusing them. Now, of course, uh, they are... uh, not able to to do this fishing in their own power and 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 and, and just as uh Jesus miraculously produced the fish in the net and then did not cause the net to break they need the power of Jesus through the spirit through the holy spirit to enable them to catch men or to to be fishers of men uh and we see that uh uh, uh, I'm speaking about the Lord Jesus speaking about that in, in uh, chapter 16 of, of John verses 7 to 11 also chapter 14 verses 12 to 14 and then uh, of course Acts we know Acts 1 8 basically tells them that uh and I'll just read that. It says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto uh, you be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So they need the power of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Jesus. To, to be the fishers that Jesus has called them to be, as, as do we. Uh, we are called uh, to take the gospel into the world, uh, the Great Commission tells us. Uh, but we're not to do that in our own strength. And whenever uh, I attempt to share the gospel, whenever I do share the gospel, I pray before, during, and after for the power of God and for God to prepare the Lord, the Holy Spirit to prepare the hearts to receive the message uh, as and for them to uh, and for him to use me to speak through me uh, what he would have received in the heart of the one that I'm witnessing to. Verse twelve. Jesus said unto them, "Come and dine." And none of his disciples durst ask him, "Who art thou?" knowing that it was the Lord. Now, again, verse, uh, they apparently did not recognize him as the Jesus they knew before his crucifixion. Uh, when, uh, when, when the old, the old Oxford English uses the word thirst, it means dare. They dare not ask him. Uh, so, so it suggests that, you know, there was some question uh, as to whether this was Jesus or not because he didn't look exactly like the Jesus that they'd known. But, and, and why Jesus might have taken some other appearance, um, I don't know. Uh, but he may have, uh, again, uh, made their eyes holden or restrained them from uh, recognizing him as he had been, uh, but they knew by his actions and by his words that it was, in fact, the Lord Jesus. I'm not even sure if they were able to see the print of the nails in his hands or his uh, feet. Perhaps they did, but they recognized it was Jesus. They were sure that it was the resurrected Lord, and they didn't question that. So they dare not ask uh anyone uh, one another is this Jesus because uh, they knew it was him um, there's a question here from the standard commentary that says how would things change um, were we to acknowledge Christ as host and center of meal times in other words if Christ was a guest at your meal times at, uh, at your meals uh, how would things change? Uh, and some talking points are regarding mealtime conversations. You know, would, would your conversation change uh, regarding mealtime priorities, regarding dinner invitations? Would you just invite 
the high muckety muck, so would you invite uh, some that were not able to invite you to a maybe a nice lavish dinner? Um, those are those are some some thoughts to consider. Uh, verse thirteen. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. So Jesus serves them this meal, and and the commentators, both commentators, say uh, this basically speaks of the provision that the Lord uh, makes for all of us. Uh, Jesus provides what they need. He's providing a breakfast for them, which is symbolic of Him providing for all of our needs, uh, as. Uh, as we read about in the Philippians 4:19, he provide he will provide for all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, uh, and uh, we we need to we need to recognize that it is because of his provision uh, we we live, move, and have our being. You know, we are nothing, we have nothing, and we can do nothing apart from God. And whatever good we do in our flesh there's, there, there's no good thing whatever good we do uh, is uh, from the Lord uh, to, to, to God be the glory for whatever good we do so just as Jesus provides this breakfast for them just as he provides which is you might think is a is a small thing uh, just as he provided the larger uh, provision of fish for them this multitude of fish Jesus provides for us in big ways and in small ways, he provides for all of our needs, and we need to recognize that each and every day and give praise uh, to God for that. And then finally, verse 14 reads, This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Now, uh, you might say, well, I don't know. What about now? Now we know the two other times that John records are in John chapter twenty, uh, John chapter twenty verses nineteen to twenty-three. Again, that's when he appeared before all of his disciples, uh, or the apostles, the eleven, uh, then in the room uh, he, that was locked and had locked doors. Uh, the evening of the, the day he resurrect, he was resurrected. And then the later in that chapter, verses 20 to 24, he appeared a week later uh, for the benefit of Thomas. Uh, and uh, so this is the third time from John's perspective, but also John says he showed himself to his disciples. His disciples and may mean the particular disciples who were chosen to be apostles uh, and not just all of the disciples. Uh, we know elsewhere it's recorded that Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Uh, that's also in John uh, 20, uh, 11 to 18. Uh, we know also that uh, Jesus appeared to Peter. And we're not told specifically when and how. But when the uh, disciples got back from Emmaus to Jerusalem to report that they had seen Jesus in the way they were told the Lord has appeared to Simon, you know. And uh, we know that Paul in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 says that Jesus appeared to over 500 at one time. Uh, he appeared to over 500 at one time, and they were all eyewitnesses of his resurrection. And Paul says, and many of them are still alive today you know you can go ask them if they saw the lord and we not so so there were other appearances the appearances that john is referring to are those that he was a witness to and the uh, the apostles the 11 were a witness to that that's my understanding now we're going to go just one more verse uh beyond our lesson text uh to verse 15 and again i think that will help uh, uh, give us a little more understanding of the purpose of this this last um, appearance uh, before Jesus ascends. So verse 15 reads, So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest 
that I like you, the word translated from Greek, uh, the love is the agape, what Jesus refers to as the agape, the self-sacrificing love. What, what, what Peter responds with is a phileo or friendship kind of love. You know that I'm a friend, I, love, I like you. He said unto him, feed my lambs. And he goes on in uh, verses 16 and 17 and repeats the same thing. And he tells him to feed his lambs, feed his sheep. So what's, what's this all about? Jesus again has come back to refocus, has, has appeared again to refocus his disciples. And, and particularly Peter, since Peter is the leader of the group. He wants to use Peter's leadership to help direct his apostles and disciples into the work that he has called them to do. And that, and of course, that work is the same work uh, that we are to do today uh, with the Lord's provisions. We are to depend on him. Uh, we are to depend on the Holy Spirit to do the convicting, the drawing. We are to just carry the message. We are to be vehicles, uh, channels, if you will, of uh, what God wants to share with the unsaved world. I hope you've understood and gotten something out of the lesson. As always, uh, we want our faith to be increased. We want our obedience to be increased as we understand the word. So I, I hope that also we will uh, take time uh, to spend more time. I was talking to my wife uh, earlier this week about the few times that we actually eat together during the week, and we're going to try to do better about that, and we're going to uh, make the Lord, the Lord Jesus, always a welcome guest at our table. May God bless you, and uh, enjoy your worship on Sunday.